Today on the newscast, a massive rocket barrage from Lebanon slams into Israel. Was Hamas behind the attack and is war on the horizon? Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast and welcome to New York City. I'm here finishing filming on an upcoming TBN special, What is the Great Reset? Tune in April 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on TBN to find out. In the meantime, we have breaking news out of Israel on the first day of Passover, a massive rocket barrage from Lebanon slamming into northern Israel. Folks, this is the largest rocket barrage to come from Lebanon since the 2006 Lebanon war, which pitted Israel against Hezbollah toe to toe in that campaign. Hezbollah fired thousands of rockets into northern Israel. Now that was 17 years ago, yet today, again, the largest outburst coming from Lebanon since then. And it looks like, according to the Israel Defense Forces, Hamas was behind this barrage. Now you might ask Hamas, look, their power base is obviously Gaza, which they rule with an iron fist, and Hezbollah is the kingpin in southern Lebanon on Israel's northern border. We know that, and yet various Palestinian terror groups operate in southern Lebanon as well, under the watchful eye of Hezbollah, and among those groups, the strongest of them, of course, is Hamas. Now, Hamas and Hezbollah have a very close relationship. Both are Iranian proxies, and both are devoted to the destruction of the state of Israel. So it looks like today Hamas helped to engineer this massive rocket volley into northern Israel. Again, certainly with the approval of Hezbollah and under Hezbollah's watchful eye, and by extension, under the watchful eye and with the urging, no doubt, of the Iranian regime. Now, at least three people were injured. Thankfully, no one was killed in this barrage. Most of this rocket fire was focused on the Western Galilee region in Northern Israel. Again, thankfully, no one killed. But folks, to say this is a serious escalation, the largest out of the North since 2006 is no escalation and is no exaggeration. And it comes amid the backdrop. As we reported on yesterday's newscast, and if you missed it, if you missed any newscast, be sure to just go to our homepage under you newscast and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. But we reported on yesterday's newscast on these rockets being launched out of Gaza. Hamas, once again, no doubt, launching dozens of rockets from the Strip into southern Israel. Of course, that happened as chaos reigns atop the Temple Mount on Passover Eve, Tuesday, Wednesday. Again, as we reported here yesterday, uh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad instigated violent riots atop the Temple Mount where young Palestinian Muslims barricaded themselves inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque, used it essentially as a weapons depot, storing uh, projectiles, rocks, fireworks to use against Jewish worshipers who were going to ascend the mount. The Israeli police eventually felt compelled to go in and clear out uh, these rioters and their weapons depot. Clashes ensued and Hamas and Islamic Jihad were breathing threats right away against Israel, accusing Israel of defiling the Al-Aqsa Mosque, when in reality, again, it was their cohorts that were using the mosque as a weapons storage depot, but I digress. Israel can't win. If Israel doesn't do anything, then the rioters carry out attacks against Israelis. If they do go in and they, they break up the rioters and their weapons, then Israel is blamed for defiling the mosque. Again, a no-win situation for Israel. And it's not only Hamas and Islamic Jihad piling on. It's the UN. It's Europe. It's the Biden administration expressing concern and calling for restraint. Uh, after Israel responds. But let's move back to the north. And what we see shaping up here, folks, is what I call the ring of fire that surrounds Israel. Look, uh, Iran has set up proxies on all of Israel's borders, whether it is Hezbollah in southern Lebanon to the north, Syria, 
uh, Gaza, of course, with Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Houthis in Yemen to the south, various Shia militias in Iraq to the east. Iran has succeeded in surrounding Israel on all sides with this ring of fire, these proxy terror groups armed to the teeth with thousands upon thousands of rockets, missiles, and attack drones. And you could see in a future war, and folks, we may be at the doorstep of one right now, that Israel will need to fight, wage this war on multiple fronts. But as we've told you here in the newscast many times, I believe the bulk of this future conflict will be fought to the north, which brings us back to the events in Lebanon today. The big question, as I come to you around 1 p.m. Eastern time, we know Israel's going to respond, but how will Israel respond? Again, at least 34 rockets on Passover, no less, or during Passover, uh, launched into northern Israel. Buildings damaged as well in Israel. So for Israel, obviously, this is a non-starter. Israel must respond. But how does Israel respond? Does Israel respond only by targeting Palestinian terror groups, again, chief among them, Hamas in southern Lebanon? Or does Israel broaden its response uh, to strike at Hezbollah as well? Remember, again, southern Lebanon is Hezbollah's power base. They rule that area with an iron fist, and they won't do anything or take any action, certainly not against Israel, without the urging and approval of their masters in Tehran. That's right, the Iranian regime. Why has Lebanon been so relatively quiet over the past 17 years? It's because Hezbollah is Iran's most lethal and valuable proxy, and the Iranian regime has held Hezbollah in reserve, again, with an eye towards that larger looming war that is coming most likely in the not-so-distant future. Hamas, on the other hand, and Islamic Jihad, the Iranian regime has shown no hesitation in throwing them into the mix time and time again, so it really should be no surprise that it was Hamas that apparently launched these rockets out of Lebanon today. The only surprise may be, again, that you're saying, Lebanon, wait, what is Hamas doing there? I thought Gaza was their power base. Yes, but Hamas also has a presence in the West Bank, which we call Judea and Samaria here in the newscast and in southern Lebanon, collaborating closely with Hezbollah. We had meetings in recent weeks between Hamas and Hezbollah officials in Lebanon. So folks, obviously the timing is no coincidence. All of this seemed geared towards using Passover. And again, we're in the middle of Ramadan, two weeks into Ramadan, the Muslim holy month. We have Easter on Sunday. We have Passover right now lasting for the next several days. Hamas and Islamic Jihad choose this moment to escalate and instigate with Israel. The Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, once again used as the flashpoint to perhaps spark a broader conflict. It started on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Now it's expanding to Gaza, where again, rockets launched. Israel responded there with airstrikes yesterday. And now to the north, folks, which could really... Uh, send things into a very nasty direction. And remember, this comes on the heels of just two or three weeks ago, a massive bomb planted in northern Israel at Megiddo Junction. We covered it here in the newscast, most likely planted by Hezbollah. Israeli airstrikes in Syria against Hezbollah and Iran there have increased over the past few weeks. We have a powder keg right now, folks to the north of Israel, and again, we are waiting to see what Israel's response will be. Prime Minister Netanyahu has convened his security cabinet in the wake of this massive rocket barrage. And again, I'm recording this in New York around 1 p.m. Eastern time here in the United States, but by the time you watch this, I would not be surprised if Israel is in the midst of a major retaliation, certainly, against whoever was behind this rocket barrage. And again, it appears to be Hamas uh, with the urging of Hezbollah. Certainly, you would think Israel will strike at Hamas, not only perhaps in southern Lebanon, but in Gaza as well. And we'll see what happens when it comes to Hezbollah. You would think right now that neither Hezbollah or Israel wants a major war at this moment. But folks, in the Middle East, things have a way of spiraling out of control. And in the Middle East today, you can expect the unexpected. 
Hey, we will be back here tomorrow with more updates, folks. Keep all of this in prayer. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Iron Dome, by the way, I should have mentioned, successfully shot down the vast majority of these rockets coming out of Lebanon and Gaza, Israel's groundbreaking Iron Dome missile defense system. So I will continue to pray a God's hedge of protection around his land and around his people. A lot going on. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.